What have you seen that when you were a skeptic, you would have never, ever have anticipated seeing? During the two years, draw on any one of the many experiences. Okay, well, do you want to... A short one or a long one? How many short minutes? One. A short one. Uh, I saw Dean Kraft move a... He's going to be on this show later. I saw him move a fountain pen across my office rug a distance of two feet just by the power of thought. Really? That was good. Absolutely. Now, what do you think? That's, that's very good. No, he didn't have wires. He no, didn't have strings. Just seemingly not. I mean, I can't, I mean, I was not down on the carpet at eye level, so I can't yeah. absolutely say not, but seemingly not. Mm -hmm. Dean Kraft is from Brooklyn, and he's received a lot of attention. Uh, reporters have, have kind of flocked to him because of uh, his ability in an area. It's called psychic healing. And let him tell you a little bit about it right now. What abilities do you claim to possess? Well... I think it's past the point of claiming anymore. I don't claim anything. Basically, the people that have claimed have been the scientists, the doctors, the medical community, the scientific community. Uh, I've been tested in various institutions, even for the government. Atomic Energy Commission had me in Lawrence Livermore Laboratories, where I was able to hold a flask of uh, cancer cells of the cervix. And uh, by holding these cells, I was able to concentrate on them. And then they did what you call a culture count, where they took uh, injection of each of the cells, ones I did work on and ones I didn't, and found out that many of the ones that I worked on started breaking apart and bursting. Now, people for years say uh, psychic healing is suggestion. Now, what is suggestion in a, in a test tube with cells? Mm -hmm. And they were affected. What uh, do you think it is that you have? Well, let me explain. Yeah. I don't like the word healer. I consider myself to be more of a catalyst. I feel what I am doing is stimulating one's own body to he help it or heal itself. May it be psychological or biological. The people that come to me for help have totally exhausted medical science. Seventy percent are referred by doctors. I even just recently taught a uh, staff of doctors at Lincoln Hospital laying on hands. And mm -hmm. um, all I can say about it is that, you know, healing, the word healing is something that I don't say for everyone to go out and run into psychic healers by no means. It should only be done through proper medical and scientific investigation. And it's something where you know, I work on cases that have been exhausted. People who have had cancer and illnesses that they've already had their chemotherapy. And um, it's something where their doctors tell them, well, go home and learn that you're going to have to die. Learn, here's painkillers. We can't do anything for you. Well, These are the people that I Now, say. what do you think is happening with, with Dean Kraft? Because you've actually had more experience with him. I think that he has some kind of uh, heightened form of energy that we all have. I think we all have a certain kind of psychic energy. And, and Dean, I think, has... A, uh, a, gr a much greater amount, and he's able to do things like, as he says, trigger the self-healing mechanisms in the body, act as a catalyst. Um, and as a matter of fact, when I referred earlier to Dean's moving the pen across the carpet by the power of psychokinesis, I think that is, is a, a form that this excessive right. amount of energy yes. takes. It can move objects. Yes. Now, we wanted you to try to move something today. But right. Well, let me explain that. I've, I've, do I've done that. I've done that. Because people wonder, why isn't he doing it on this? Of course. Um, I used to do psychokinesis four or five times a day when I wasn't laying on of hands. And there I used to have it to do it an awful lot, no problem. As I started to heal, it would take longer and longer. It would take 35, 40 minutes for me to force myself to do it. I'd throw on the floor and I'd start vomiting. I think I even regurgitated on dance floor. As a matter of fact, yeah, can I tell that? It's not yeah, really worth it. Dan, I can't move that. Dan. When D Dean uh, was over at my house yeah. for dinner, and uh, I said, uh, Dean said, hey, Dan, you want a healing? I figured, why not? You know, sure, you anytime you lost. get a free healing. So we went down to my office, and uh, Dean starts doing a healing, and suddenly he feels that he can do psychokinesis. And, uh, and I, I didn't know that at the time. He snatched my glasses, which he had taken off and put on my desk, off the desk, thrust them at, the, at me and said, put these on. And he, I look and he's dropped to the floor on his knees. And I thought, oh, I shouldn't be watching. This is a private moment. He's praying. And I closed my eyes and I said, wait a minute. He's a Jewish boy. Jewish boys don't pray on their knees. <laughs> and I opened my eyes just in time to see this pen start moseying along the floor. <laughs> toward him, and after it had gone about two feet, Dean doubled over and started dry heaves. Now, he had told me that that's how he reacts when he does PK, and upstairs, his wife goes, oh, God, Dean's doing PK. You know, can't take him anywhere. It's like, <laughs> you know, you take yeah, a husband. I had, to, PK, I I had to make finish. sure to get his glasses on. <laughs> Please, so Dan, put see. them on. Yeah, you take your husband to a dinner on. party. How did you react when you saw drunk, a pen move? He puts a lampshade <laughs> on his head. Dean does PK, yeah. right? Well, let, yeah. me, let me explain. I've done this for a scientist, Dr. Yeah. Ted Bastian. Uh, many scientists from all over the world have seen this. Just recently, a, a port report's going to be published. Uh, it's going to be presented for the Parapsychology Association for its conference in Utrecht, Holland, where I've done experiments, electrostatic field experiments, where I, I did psychokinesis under laboratory control conditions with sensitive equipment. 
So it didn't take much energy out of me, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. So therefore, but I'd be glad maybe at another time where we could maybe send, set up some sensitive apparatus. I'm sure, sure. there's a time where we can Come back set and it up. do that. Now, Definitely. in the meantime, there is a way that you can sh demonstrate to an individual a little bit of the power, the electricity yeah. well, that's I, going through you. Well, it's I mean, it's I not a visual it. feeling, but I can just give you what I call a little zap, a little energy. So if I can give it to you, do you both. Okay? Okay, do us both. Yeah. Well, right. this, well this doesn't affect fertility in, on any level, does it? <laughs> now, I'm telling you, Penthouse Forum is doing an article, article on impotence, which will be out in the October issue. I've been able to help people with that problem also, which, of course, medical science... You're not the only one who deals in that area. Uh, I know that. But I'm just, you just said that, so I'm saying I, I, I yeah. don't think I've had a negative effect to that, but maybe a positive one. I, I understand. Okay. So what are you going to do now? Okay, nothing. I'm just going to touch his. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. All right. Is it, now, why don't you... Can you not relax in yourself at all? Just... Just sit there, just sit there, because if I say relax, and all of a sudden you have a skeptic, oh, hypnosis, self-hypnosis, you know? Do it, do it to us, and then we'll bring somebody up from the audience. You can try it with them. It feels nice. Any problems or anything with me? No, I don't do diagnosing. Good. It's dangerous. I think I'm falling in love with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> it's nice to be quiet on the air every once in a while. People are fiddling with the sound in their set. Yeah. People may be wondering what I'm feeling. It's, it's kind of like a vibrating effect from uh, Dean's hand. You can open your eyes if you like it. That's just a little, just a little zap. <sighs> it's just a... I like what day is out. it today? <laughs> Yeah. Who, who am I? <laughs> Where, what are we doing here? I, my mind has been removed. Uh, I feel, feel lightheaded, by the way. I, I feel very relaxed. Okay. I, I, yeah. can't, I can't say that... I got a little feeling of lightheadedness just at the very end. Right. Yeah. Well, I really couldn't do my, my... You know, usually my work is in my work within 10 or 20 minutes, you see? Well, one thing I must say for myself, I had the dual feeling of having something done to me and the sense of my own role as a host of the show, you know, wondering what was happening. Right. If people were minding that there was no sound. You know oh, what I, I mean understand. By all that? Fine. Yeah, yeah. Understand. Well, you could have sat up there and you could have done the jig and played the banjo, and it wouldn't have mattered. Really? Yeah, it wouldn't uh, have mattered. I'd like to point out an interesting yes. thing, and that is, I used to have a terrible allergy to milk products. I get, used to get a terrible upset stomach any time I had cheese or yogurt or milk or anything like ice cream or anything like that. And uh, I got a shot of healing from Dean, and I got a shot of healing from another healer named. Um, Reverend John Scudder in Homewood, Illinois. And I don't have the milk allergy anymore. And I don't say necessarily it's because I got these shots of healing. It's just an interesting coincidence. It's, yeah, it's very interesting. Dean, stay with us. We'll take a break and we'll be back right after this.